Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show that talks about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of awakening and remembering why we came here, or at least the next step of why we're here and what we're here to do and what lights us up and what brings us joy and what brings us a sense of connection and fulfillment. And that's what I'm all about. I'm Carrie Hummingbird. I'm your host. And I love taking people on the first few steps of that journey into finding their own truth, tuning into their own channel and recreating and reinventing their lives to align with that truth that they now know about themselves so that they can live more happy, fulfilled, wonderful existences and have amazing, miraculous things happen. And I'm stumbling over my words today, but I'm really excited to be here. I've got another great guest on the show, Michael Tranmer. Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much for having me. Stoked to be here. I'm excited. So Michael helps launch new online coaches so they can leave their corporate jobs and powerfully serve their people on a higher level. Michael's greatest leadership strength is his ability to engineer clarity for his clients. Michael mastered this skill over a successful engineering career, leading project teams on multi-million dollar projects. His transition into the thought leader industry came after reaching a low point in his life followed by a powerful transformation working with a coach of his own. And now he lives and plays in Vancouver, but has massive plans to create a global life of travel adventure and inspiring others. So that we're going to have a great talk because, of course, I think that you know that I actually also started off in high tech. I was in uh, Silicon Valley for a couple of decades doing high tech. High tech, uh, I see, it even gags me. Like when I just say it, like my throat just gags up. I'm like, gah, 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 gah. I'm doing, <laughs> sorry to anybody out there who's currently working in the field, but uh, I couldn't handle it anymore. I was like, oh my God. So uh, 20 years of making myself sit behind a computer and produce a technical document explaining how the software works. Mm-hmm. So I was working with people like you actually and trying to get details out of you. And that was like really torturous. So I'm really glad that you're here. We're on the same page again now. This is great. So that's, that's was- a tricky one, tricky one to try to get anything out of a stubborn engineer. So I uh, feel, I feel your pain <laughs> for these 20 years that you must have had to a, a stubborn and, and often very poor at communicating and engineers. That's uh they're like, oh, don't you just get it? <laughs> like, don't, don't, no. don't you just get it. Can you just look at it and get it? No. No, I don't. You have to explain it. So, and I had to explain it to all those other people out there who really don't get it. At least I have a bridge to getting it, but you know, so, so tell us, um, tell us about how you guys started. Cause I know we heard a little snippet, but let's get into the juicy details. Like what, what is, what does it look like? I mean, what was your life before your life now? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good question. Yeah. That sums it up nicely. What was it before? And it, it's, it's interesting. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm in this new world now, but every now and then you have flashback to the old world. Cause it's only, it's only, it's been a shorter period of time for me. And I, so I was riding the, I was on the train this morning on the subway here in Vancouver and I see all these people going downtown and into their jobs, into the corporate world, into what was my old world. And I'm like, uh, like, should I be doing this? Like, should I still be on this train with these people? Should this still be me? This, this was me, but I've, I've chosen this new direction and I did it for a reason. I have to keep going. So it's just very timely to, <laughs> to talk about that this morning after the, this was only an hour ago that I was, I was on the train doing this. But my, I mean, my, my world before it was, it was good, but not great. You know, I had the, the steady engineering job, making good money very fortunate to have a condo here in Vancouver. I was married, you know, we're doing all the trips We're we're doing the Whistler weekend trips. We're doing the hiking, doing the skiing, did the fairy tale Whistler wedding and the Maui honeymoon. So, I mean, things, things were pretty good, but, but not great. Right. Like for me, I never loved engineering and five years of school, six years of school, and then 12 years of working as an engineer. That's a long time to do something that you don't love. And then the relationship, you know, it, it started out great, but, you know, we had very poor communication skills and neither of us were living our true lives, living as our true selves. And, and we drifted apart and communication got worse. And then, you know, everything sort of came to a head when, when the marriage came to a real sudden end a little over a year and a half ago. And that's where my shell really started to crack quite hard. 
I know that crack. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that one. That's a tough one because, you know, here's what I've realized about it. And, and I'll just share, like I, and I'll, and I'll ask you your perspective on it. Mm -hmm. I kind of realized that the first part of my life, I was being this person that I thought everybody wanted me to be or expected me to be somehow. And for me, it had a lot to do with responsibility. So like choose the responsible job, get the responsible money, be responsible in your relationship, you know, do the work, have the kids, all the whole thing. And so I just kept doing the things that I was supposed to do to create a good life. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, like I, it wasn't fulfilling. Like I remember the moment I wanted to have kids is because I realized that eating out wasn't fulfilling anymore. Mm. So I thought, okay, well, I'll have kids. <laughs> like, it's probably not the best choice to have kids. Yeah. But that's kind of where I was in my thinking. Like, okay, well, I must be on the next part now because it's not fulfilling anymore. So you crack open and, and then you start this adventure where you don't know what's going to happen any minute. It's all going to be new. And then you find yourself. So talk a little bit about that because I that part of the story is juicy. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's... <laughs> still, I wouldn't still call it as clean, clean of a clean of a road going now. It's not like it's a crack put back together. Everything's awesome now. Oh no, no, it's like a messy oh. soup. But aren't you learning a lot about yourself? <laughs> oh, I'm, I mean, and growth is not supposed to be comfortable. And now, now I'm I'm obsessed with growth. Now, once you get into personal development, you're like, oh my, I want more. But it's, I mean, there's a whole bunch of challenges that that go with that. Um, you know, one being that I, you know, I find it really hard to be around the people that I used to hang around with, right? And so this is a this is very challenging because we need community, we need people to connect with. So I'm working hard on on building a new one of those. But yeah, what happened for me it was it was everything everything cracked open and and it was really really hard but really beautiful because I had I had all this clarity for once and space in my life. And so I was having all these realizations about about the past but also about myself and and my personality and how there were some parts of it that I wanted to scrub a little bit moving forward because I was going to be recreating my new self, my best self, and also what I wanted to do. And now I, ha I could do freaking anything I wanted, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the age I'm at. So I'm not, I've, got, I've got life left to live. I've got resources. I have skills. It's a freaking incredible. We're so lucky, especially here in Canada. We can, we have so many opportunities, but I can, it's great to have that blank slate, but also very terrifying at the, at the same time. Yeah. So it, what, yeah. What it was, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a blank slate, but, and then it was, that was really the, the first step having this space to, to have these realizations, but also get clear and committed to, to move forward. And then every single time you step out on a challenge though, with that unknown in front of you, like you'll have like, okay, I now have clarity. Then you act in the clarity. Well, then like something else arises, right? Cause that's just how it is. The yeah. next thing arises and you're like, oh my God. And it's the new thing that you get to have clarity around yourself with. But, but talk about that journey for yourself a little bit too. Like how, how is it teaching you about yourself? Yeah. And it teaches me more and more every day. Yeah. You get this, this jump of clarity, like, yes, I'm, I'm clear on that. And then something else gets fuzzy and then you get clear on that. And then you move forward a little bit more and you get clear on the next step. And, and for me, back when this was going on about a year, year, year and a half ago, it was, you know, it was finally like, you know, I'm, I'm really, really clear now that I can no longer sit behind a desk and, and do the engineering work. I don't want to be in front of a computer. I want to be in front of the people. And so when I started working with, with a coach of my own, it really helped me help me own that and get clear on that and really shed the, the victim mindset of what had happened to me with, with, at the end of the relationship, but also get clear on what I wanted to create going forward. So I was really, I was really growing really, really rapidly, quite rapidly. And I started to share what I was doing with the people around me in, in my circles and on social media as well. And I saw that I could influence them and I could make them think and I could, I could really help them think about their lives. And that, I mean, that's how I got into coaching as well. I'm like, wow, this, this is incredible. I can move these people on this, on this intimate level, help them level up their lives. I can, I can, I can really make a difference on a one-on-one -on -one and a one-to-many one -to -one -to platform as well like this. And when, when you start to see people move and improve, and then that, those good vibes come back to you. It's like this circle of awesomeness, right? You really start to fuel each other with this, 
with this energy. I'm like, this is what I need to explore more. When I'm listening to you, I'm like actually thinking about, um, <laughs> like listening to what you're saying. I'm so resonating with it because it's like mirrors the journey that I had. And I'm thinking, wow, I finally let myself get out from behind the computer and like mingle with people. And I discovered a hidden talent that I was ignoring. <laughs> That's actually my superpower. But I, I had picked a career where I was like, stuck behind a desk doing, you know, doing like mind work, you know, all by myself and not engaging with people. And then when I started doing this, I was like, wow, I'm actually pretty good at talking to people. <laughs> like, this is actually a superpower for me. I like being in front of the camera. I like having these conversations. And I always have. Mm -hmm. I remember being a kid, like, I love talking to my dad about the, you know, the, all this kind of stuff. I love these kind of conversations. And these are leadership conversations. And I think that um, what I find interesting is that, is that you're, to me, like when I met you um, months ago and, and we talked and everything, and then, and then when we recently talked, what I see in you is, uh, is, a, is a natural leader. Like there's just obvious that you're a leader, you know, it's just everything about just the way you show up and, you know, um, how you can clearly, clearly communicate and, and how your presence is and the kinds of things you're thinking. And, you know, so I, if I just met you, I would never imagine you being behind a desk being an engineer. Yeah, it's and <laughs> to be honest with you, I I I was not like this. I was not like this a year and a half ago. So you cracked up and so like you're you just went Pew! Yeah, I, I I I mean communication was one of the main reasons why the marriage came to an end. And I was never able to stand up and articulate myself and speak clearly and have clear thoughts. Not a chance. Not at all. Absolutely, two years ago, not a chance. But it, how did I do it? Like, I, yeah, it was really that. It was the crack open, and it was it was the get clear. And the one thing that really changed, like when I was thinking back, when you were just speaking right now, and and sitting behind the desk and being there and not going out and interacting with all the people, what really when I cracked apart in my in my low point, it was it was a huge part of the ego that was just cracking and wilting apart. And, you know, before in my old world, I wouldn't, my, my ego wouldn't let me go and approach and help these other people. But now I'm coming at it from a different place where, you know, I can really help you and I can, I can share all this information and all the insights that I have. And I can, yeah, I can be a leader. I can help you and lift it up where before it was completely opposite. I was like, I need to keep this all to myself. I, why would I want to help you people get ahead when, when I'm trying to get ahead and I'm trying to get a better house and a better car? And so it's been the complete switch. Yeah. The complete switch. And that's been one of the biggest, biggest changes that's, that's gone on. And, and to have that realization that that's how I used to operate when I first had those realizations, like, oh, man, what was wrong with you, dude? That's, that's painful. Yeah. Well, now you see it in other people. Like, I, I would say that um, this is a difficult journey, what you're doing going from a corporate employee into being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is a huge transition, huge, mm -hmm. huge, huge. And, and I was even a consultant for 20 years, right? But, but I worked for big companies. Okay. So that's, that even right there is different than what you're doing. Cause you're not working for big companies where you can just kind of like have a long contract and you get lots of hours and you keep, you know, you're almost like an employee. No, you went for co consumer, like business to consumer. That is like a radical shift in mentality. And it's really what you're talking about. It's like, this is where you become the champion and the advocate of your people. And, and what I love is that is the mirror is that you've become you've become the, the champion and advocate of yourself. And in doing that, now you can become a champion and advocate of other people. Because first we have to do it for ourselves. We can't do for somebody else what we haven't done for ourselves. Yeah, and yeah, Carrie, it ain't easy. No, it's, it's not, not. I know it's not. And I like, <laughs> and, and, and yeah, but yeah, I have to do it. So, because I can't bring people on this journey with me until, until I do it and I'm doing it. And so I was, you know, I was part-time in the engineering world up until a couple months ago and then I then I shut it down so yeah I'm completely out of that but to go oh boy oh, it makes me sick sometimes but to yeah. go from that that security even when I was part-time I knew all I had to do was show up to, to get a paycheck every every couple weeks 
but I, I, you know, I knew at a certain point, you know, I was having some good success in, in the coaching and helping people out. I knew that to take it to the next level, I, I had to sever the cord and, and stuff like, it's really how I'm going to, how I was using my time, like my time there, even though you get some money after a couple of weeks, it's not the best use of my time, how I can best use my, my time here and my skills to, to help other people. But, you know, I'm just, you know, I've, given myself lots of pep talks lately. I'm like, this is where I am now. I'm, I'm, you know, I've got a game plan for the summer. Um, but that's really it. Like I, I, I often, when I'm talking to, to my clients that are doing the, or want to do the same sort of move, I'm telling, I'm telling them like, this ain't going to be easy. This ain't going to be easy, but you have to keep going. You have to keep going. And I think back, I think back to this, I'm sort of in this, in this period of, uncertainty sure but I, I always think back to to when i got out of university and all i all i had was you know five or the six or seven years of, of education i didn't have a job then all everything everything else started after that like i was in the same sort of space but now i'm on 12 and a half years later i have all these new skills i have some dollars saved up so it's not much different but it kind of is, right? So I, you know, I really feel for people that that want to do this same big move, and and believe me, I mean, I'm there to support you because it's it's a good one. Yeah, it's a big move. So you know, one of the things that I uh, when I went through that transition, because same thing, I had like my safety net, you know, for a while, and get this, this is the best part. I had a contract that uh, I had my biggest client contracting right when I got divorced just happened to say, Hey, I need, we need a full-time employee. We want you to come on. I was like lifesaver. Cause there's no way I could go out and get another client at that point. Right. Like I was yeah. trashed. Yeah. So I, uh, you know, cause you have to have confidence as an entrepreneur to get out there and get clients. Like it's just, you've got to have confidence. And when you're in the middle of a divorce, mm -hmm. that's not a good time for that. Mm -hmm. So I actually, uh, I took that job and then I, several years ago, I think in 2015 or something like that, they told me, hey, we're going to lay you off in a year. They gave me a year runway, a year. And I'd already been practicing and studying. I went to energy medicine school because I, I do something a little more complicated, right? I do like healing work and stuff like that on mm -hmm. top of mentoring. So it's like something that in Texas, not everybody has understood what that is until recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's been an education platform. So but the cool thing is that I had that runway. So what I like to tell people is like, get the runway, right? Like have, like you have money saved up. That's your runway. You were doing, you kept doing the work for a while, right? As a runway. Let's talk about runways. Cause like runways and then the moment where you know, you need to close all the back doors. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Runways. <laughs> yeah. So, so important. I love so that fun. analogy. And so the first thing when people come to me and they're like, Oh, I've had it, you know, I need to find a way to, to leave my job. And usually they, they have something, they're similar past to me. Like they've gone through some sort of transition. They want to help and coach people on a different level in, in many different types of coaching. But the first thing I say to them is do not quit your job. Yeah. Do don't quit. quit your job. Don't quit <laughs> your job runway. yet. Get a don't nice quit your runway. job yet. Yeah. Just know that just be empowered that you are now taking steps towards maybe a year from now when you will be able to. So just, just really reframe, reframe the time that you go and spend at your job. Just know that every day that you go in there, you're really building skills and connections to take forward into your new world when it is coming. And for them, they really, for the most part, feel, feel good because they know they have a way out. They know they have a way out. And I really like to, to communicate to them that it's going to be a lot of work and there's going to be a lot of roadblocks and you're going to want to quit a hundred times. But if you just keep going and keep learning and keep, keep absorbing the, the feedback and, and growing and getting better, then it, then it will happen. Absolutely. And then when it gets to that point, and for me, yeah, in the last, uh, last couple months ago, when I, when I, what I really needed to do when, when I retired from engineering, I knew I had to, to take myself to the next level. I really had to commit. I had to, I had to, <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had to, I had to cut the rope and let the boat go out to sea. Right. Otherwise I would have just kept drifting on in this with always one toe in one place and one in the other. And as well, it's a balance of energy. Like when you're going to a place part time, you're dedicating some of your energy to that each week. If you want to take your entrepreneurship, your business, your coaching to the next level, it needs all your energy. 
totally true. I saw that. I'm so glad you said that because I found the same thing. There was a teaching when I went to uh, the Four Winds Society for Energy Medicine training. They, uh, they had this teaching at the end of the course, at the end of all the training, you know, like this two years of training. They said, okay, now you guys need to learn about closing the back door. <laughs> I was like, okay, closing the back door. What does that mean? And it was really about you can't have any like safety nets where you're like, oh, I can always fall back on that. Or, oh, I can always go back over there and do that. Because anytime you're doing that, you're not becoming the new thing. Like you are just, you're, you're sort of resting in the old consciousness while you're dabbling with the new one. And you can't do that. You've actually got to radically close all the back doors. So I remember um, right about the part you're in right now, I did like a, like a, a series. I did like a three, a three month series with a bunch of other experts. And I, I did like a, a program for people to get daily guidance or something. And I was learning from it. Okay. So I did it because I wanted to learn from all these people. <laughs> and plus people bought it, whatever. It was great. But the whole point is learning, you know, like I always want to be learning. So what I learned in that one, as I did that meditation, I was like, I've got to close my back door. I haven't closed it yet. I know that job's ending. I don't really want to go get another corporate job to fill it or even another contract. Like, because I realized what you said. Every time, even if it was only five hours a day or even one hour a day that I was, even one hour, I was putting that one hour on this thing that I didn't like, mm -hmm. I was taking that hour away from the total 100% commitment on my energy healing practice, on my mentoring practice. And so I just, I just got disgusted with even the one hour. Like I, I was like, I can't even do one hour. I put it over here and I finally just did that. I just went, yeah. And the whole focus went, and I took the dive, you know, and it's terrifying for about a year. <laughs> Not to, hopefully that wasn't happening to you, but I was. Oh, I'm sure it will. I was radically terrified for about a year, but I, I just, every day I woke up and I said, with gratitude, I'm grateful that today I get to do my passion. Mm -hmm. I have one more day to do my, that's how I got through it. <laughs> I'm going to cry. One more day I can do my passion and I can survive. I can do one more day. And I would, I would open and I would like, okay, what's the new workshop I'm going to plan? Or what's the new thing I'm going to plan that's going to bring more clients in? One more day I can do my passion. One more day I can live my truth. And I think that that really helped get me through those difficult times is just being grateful for that one last day. <laughs> just mm -hmm. One more day that I can do. I won't even say last. One more day that I can do this. And I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm going to enjoy every moment while I have it. Love that. Love that. Yeah. And for, for me, what I'm saying to myself right now is for now I'm here for now. I'm doing this this day. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this now. This is part of the plan. And yeah, for me, like the next part of the, I've, I've sort of closed the door, but now I'm going to get out some nails and really board it down. <laughs> and feel it. So yeah, I'm, I've, I've, I've got this chunk of, of savings that I'm, you know, it's, it's really, a, it's really a cushion. So what I'm going to do, I'm really going to blow up half of it or a good portion of it because I, I know that to get myself where I want to go, I need to learn all these new skills. I need to grow a lot more. Like I, I've grown a ton over the last year and a bit and, and that felt great. And now I'm sort of in this period of self growth, but now I know I need to invest and really level up to the next level. So I'm about to enter this period of three months or so of just doing that, investing in mentors, getting to the next level. And it's going to be incredible, but it's going to be that. It's going to be really taking the door to the old world and sealing it up with glue and tape and duct tape and all that stuff. So it's, it's exciting and I'm nervous, but it's great. Yeah. And you know, so also I want to say like when we're choosing a mentor, um, the really fascinating thing about it is that you can, you know, you can go after somebody who's like on the books, like, oh, this person's like really excellent. been doing it for 40 years or whatever like that. But the thing of the matter is, is like, if you're in this transition, like, like if somebody out there listening is in the transition of like, oh, okay, I want to move from uh, my, co I'm in an engineering job right now and I hate it. And I want to get out of it and I want a strategy for moving myself into something better. Well, Michael is actually in the perfect place to help you because the, the thing I really learned as I was doing my own process is that I'm really, really excellent at helping the person that's, that's going through the thing that I just went through. Like, 
Cause mm-hmm. I, ju- yes. I'm so passionate about it. Like I'm so like fired up about that thing, whatever it is that I'm like, I'm in the moment. I'm really in touch with it. I really get it. I'm really like immersed in it. And that is the time you want to work with somebody that has already just overcome the challenge mm-hmm. that you're getting ready mm-hmm. to face. Right. Cause you're, they're passionate. Like you're totally fired up and passionate about this. Like you're in the nitty gritty and all the details of like this whole transition. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's why I got to keep, I mean, that's why we update our websites every three to six months, because yeah. we're changing about what we're interested in. So right now, I'm really fired up about just that, helping people go from corporate to entrepreneur, because it's all mindset. It's all mindset. And as a mentor, and as a coach, you help people dance through all those self-doubts and limiting beliefs and all that stuff to keep them moving forward. And so, yeah, I'm fired up about that right now. But now when I'm, a, when I'm about to go to this next level, to this next stratosphere, I'm going to get fired up about something else, about how to, and I suspect it's going to be how to take coaches in their business really to the next level because that's that's what's going to happen to me. So I, I look forward to that. But, yeah, spending a lot of time updating websites <laughs> as you need to uh, yeah. the messaging. But that's what it is. That's how fast. And that's what's been so thrilling about this new world, about how fast you can learn new skills and you can evolve and you can grow. And that is what was really missing for me over, you know, a dozen dozen years as a a slowly progressing corporate dude. Ah, I love that you just brought that up. Okay, so I'm going to interject here now because this is a really good point. The frog in boiling water thing is real. Like what I realized is that people that stayed in corporate, because I got out of corporate after my first three years, like I, by the t- age of like 26, I was like, I'm out of here. Like I cannot, I'm drowning in this. It's like awful. So I had to get out. I, I, I still worked for companies, but I did it independently from my own space at my own time at my own rate on my terms, you know, because I like that way I felt better about it. I was like, I still have my identity. I made, you know, I made time on my schedule to go paint, you know? So I really, I really advocate people keep your hobbies alive keep your interests alive don't die in the corporate structure because here's what I noticed I'm gonna tell this whole story so when I went to energy medicine training I would what would happen is I go away for like a whole week of retreat and during that week like we do these like massive upgrades like just like get all these healings and figure deep personal stuff out and leave all this like resolve childhood traumas I mean all kinds of stuff would happen in the course of that week and you'd be just your mind would be blown apart like oh my god and then you would be your perception would be like way open like wow you know I'm ascended my light is full so after one of those retreats I went to the corporate office where I was working it's like a balloon, I was like, it's like a balloon getting popped. And- yeah, like I was like this huge, like bright light walking in. Like I was like the sunshine walking into the office, and everybody's at their desk, and they're like, I realized they were like batteries that were like, yeah. like down like a quarter power. Mm-hmm. Like their energy fields were like down here, and they didn't know that. They were not aware of it. And I was looking at, I was so upset. I was looking around the office and I'm like, oh my God, everybody in here is dying and they don't know it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I thought it was terrible. So I just, I just say that to like, you know, keep yourself alive. Like if you've got to do one of those corporate jobs, like please keep yourself alive, do some hobby, do some exercise, eat right, get out of the office during the day, breathe fresh air, like deep breaths, anything to stay alive yeah and that's a conversation and i'm gonna in some fashion dip back into the corporate world on my terms when the time is right because i really you know the conversation i was focusing on before i left was really with the millennials and the the younger generation because that's where i am coming out of and that's what i'm most fired up about and i think there's a real disconnect in the in the communication between them and the older generations i just i know they're not talking But what I really wanted to do and the message I was sharing with them is you really have to empower yourself to have the success within your role while you're there in the corporate world. And so mirroring your message, it's it's like you are responsible for your personal development. You are responsible for turning your your light on. Do not sit at your desk and wait for opportunities to come to you. Do not wait for something miraculous to happen. You really have to generate your own energy and your own opportunities and your own power if that's where you are right now at this time, it's, it's up to you to do it. No one else is going to do it for you. And even if you stay in corporate job, because I, I have several, you know, director levels that I coach, mentor, you know, big companies. 
and they're, they work the corporate job and they, they live the lifestyle where they go meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting with barely a time for like a pee break. You know, Mm -hmm. I think it's ridiculous, but they have a vision Mm -hmm. because I help them make space to create a vision for their life. So they don't just get like swept under the carpet of the corporate structure. It's like, no, like you need to understand. And I think every person is responsible to create your life vision and keep creating it and keep, you're an entrepreneur of your life, whether you want to work a corporate job for now or not, it doesn't matter. You still have to maintain that awareness that I am the entrepreneur of my own life. My whole life is my entrepreneurship and I have to, I got to take it forward, right? Like you can't just like let it all just happen to you Mm -hmm. because then you're just, you, you end up with a tiny little battery. Yeah. 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 Be the the CEO of your life and, and yeah, you have to have that vision of what you want to create and then you have to take steps towards it. And then, but you also have to be very aware when you're about to take steps that are diverting you in the complete opposite direction of what you're trying to create as well. And yeah, the same, same goals and planning and all that exists and can exist in the corporate world as well. Absolutely. Yeah, you can keep a corporate job and you might even be able to get transferred into, like, I wonder for you, this is one of the things I was wondering as you were sharing your story, is like, what would have happened if your corporate structure was set up to recognize that you you were not actually fulfilled by what you were doing and that there was a different role you could have been filling that would have given you a lot more fulfillment, you know, like, what would happen if corporations looked at it that way? We're like, wow, we've got Michael here who's like got all these major major skills and you know, da 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 da, da and he's got this and that. He's in the wrong spot. Yeah, and I I <laughs> I I tried I tried to create a coaching program within this engineering firm because I knew I was so passionate about it and I knew I could really start and, and bring forward the conversation. I knew I could relate to the millennials. I got all the feedback from them, but it didn't happen. And I wasn't going to wait or they said, maybe it's going to happen, but I wasn't going to wait around for it. So I'm sorry, too bad, real missed opportunity. I will probably take that somewhere else. It may be to your competitor and they may absolutely gain from, from my insights and my, my services. So for the people that are in charge of corporations out there, yeah, great point, Carrie. Like when you see someone who is fired up about something and they have that background of, and they know the culture of your, your company, which takes a while to, to build up and understand be open to creating something that can be mutually beneficial or else the opportunity will pass by. Yeah. I think, I think a lot of energy gets trapped up in these uh, rigid corporate structures that, uh, that they top down and force. And then there's a lot of like weird infighting and backbiting and, you know, political maneuvering and all of that and that kind of culture, which also drains your energy. Like that's all an energy leak. Every single one of those things is an energy leak. Being part of means you don't really need to be part of, you know, there's a lot of things we, that you get free of that when you, when you work for yourself, which is what you're pro- proposing for people to do is like, Hey, if you're tired of that crap, you could actually be your own boss. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the people that I work with, like I said before, they've been through a transformation of their own and, and now they want to help people for the most part that are in that same place and that that's their calling and they can really hear it. And, and so they're really frustrated every day when, when they go to their day job and, and they want out of there somehow, some way, but yeah, it's a process. And I take them through, you know, my 10 step process, process that I've engineered the system that I've put together to get them there because there's certain things that need to, to happen in a sequence to help you get closer to, to that dream of, yeah, serving your people on a, on a higher level. And I love that you just said that too, because you just said you engineered a process, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is what you've been doing for 12 years is engineering. Yeah. And it took me a while to to get at that. Yeah. How to get things to all work with your end goal in mind. So you're just applying those. So you haven't actually like wasted any time at all everything that you've been doing up till now is serving you in a new way. And that's the same thing for everyone out there that's listening. And that's hard to sometimes appreciate and understand, especially when you are somewhere where you don't want to be, but yeah, just have that new mindset that, yeah, I'm going to this place today, this job today. I have a vision of where I want to go. So I'm going to try and build some new skills and get some new connections and do whatever I can do on this day. That's going to serve me going forward. And yeah, for me, 12 and a half years in, in engineering, I, I learned a lot. I got a lot of great connections. I was challenged. I screwed up a bunch. 
but yeah, absolutely perfect. Every, everything is a lesson for, for what I'm doing now and for what I'm going to be doing going forward. So how would you say like, uh, your life, this model of, of working is, has made your life different versus the model that you had before? Like what's the key difference? Uh, in terms of my day to day and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, for me, one to be honest with you, one of my real challenges right now is is being around people and finding other people and being being around a community. Because when you take yourself out of that, out of a place of going to see humans each and every day, and you're a solopreneur and you're single, and there's no one else around. It's not good. It's not healthy. We need we need other people in our world. So that's that's been a real challenge for me and something that I'm. I'm really working on because yeah, like I said before, it's not like I can automatically go out and hang out with all the people that I've always hung out with because it doesn't, the energy isn't the same anymore because I've, you know, I've evolved to, to new interests in, in my life. So I've got, those are, those are really some of the biggest challenges for me. And then, you know, apart from that, it's a lot of people struggle with the lack of structure. I'm pretty good with that. You know, I'm pretty good with, um, you know, I got a pretty tight morning routine that sets me up for the day. Uh, I have no shortage of things to do. I'm pretty good at getting them done. But yeah, for me, it's really, it's really building in contact and connection with other humans. So something that I always caution people about when they're going down the solopreneur journey. Yeah, so important. Well, good. So, well, but you have a lot of freedom. And I remember the last time we were talking, you were going to go to the beach or something. You're like, oh, okay, it's time to go to the beach now, you know, <laughs> something like that. Oh, yeah, that. There's, there's been lots of time. I mean, I do most of my coaching calls on the way down to the beach, and maybe I'll jump in the cold ocean halfway through and, and then come back. So it's it's great. And I mean, that's always what I, to be honest, we like that's what I always dreamt of, right? And that's what people fantasize about, working from the beach. The part I didn't quite dream about was, was not having other humans around. And so you yeah. need to be really, really careful about what you're, what you're trying to, to manifest. And, you know, we, we, we learn and we, and we add to our dreams. And so now the things I'm thinking about and I'm, I'm manifesting going forward, I'm, I'm doing my best to, to pull in all the aspects that I know are going to help me live a super fulfilling life. Awesome. Well, that sounds like pretty great. I'll tell you, I do take my coaching calls from my front porch, rocking in my rocking chair and I like it there, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I sit Beautiful. on my front lawn and people, my neighbors think I'm weird. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I don't care. It's no. my office. That's so. right. <laughs> That's my right. Office with my trees. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just wrap up here, but I think you have a free gift for everybody. You have a free gift that you are offering, which is a blueprint for new coaches. Yes, absolutely. Your 10 step plan. That's it. Yeah. If you go to my website, okay. it's there. It takes you through a lot of the things we talked about today. And yeah, you just go to my website, put in your email and it goes right to you. Website's michaeltranmer.com, T-R-A-N-M-E-R. And yeah, I, you know, it's something I created because it was something that I wish I had in the beginning to, to see where this journey was going to go and, and maybe get a feeling of the challenges that I was going to face on this journey and also get some other insights about what is important and what's not important. And yeah, it's, it's right there. It's a lot to share. Have at her. Awesome. Well, so if anybody out there is uh, ready to take that adventure or at least explore it and open the travel menu, um, there's your free gift from Michael's website and you can check it out. And, you know, I just encourage you to, you know, if you are kind of working that corporate gig and you're like, I know that this is not where I'm meant to end up you know, to really at least download it, you know, and take a look and let your, let yourself imagine for a couple of moments, what it might be like to be free and to do something that you're passionate about. And, uh, you know, at the very least, uh, do a vision board, you know, do a dream board for yourself and, and really, uh, put on there some things that you'd love to manifest for yourself in this lifetime, you know, cause this is your, this is your shot. You know, was, I saw these little kids the other day and, uh, I said to them, there's only one you, and you're the only one throughout the whole universe, all time, space, and dimension that will have your name. So like Michael, you're the only Michael Tranmer throughout all time, space, and dimension. There'll never be another one. That's you. So you might, you might as well make it like the best version of you that the most audacious, the most epic version of you that ever lived because there's only one shot at it. So you might as well make it awesome, right? 
Oh man, if we could just record that and you could, if that could be my alarm clock every morning, <laughs> oh, that'd be so beautiful. But these, these are the pep talks we have to give to ourselves because every day, you know, we get the self chatter that comes out and the doubts and the fears and all of that. But it's just that it comes back to that. Forget all the other crap and just focus on, on those words right there. Make it epic, make it important, make a difference. Don't worry about the haters. Don't learn from your challenges. Keep moving forward. All those things. Yeah, that's going to be my alarm clock, Carrie. Thank you. Yeah, you'll have the recording of it. I'll send, you, I'll send you a little audio clip. All right. Well, I'm glad I could help. And I'm glad that you guys uh, got some good information from somebody passionate about making the leap. This is, like I said, it's really great to have that energy and that oomph, you know, right under your wings uh, as, you, as you contemplate this transition in your life, if you are contemplating it. And share it out with anybody who you know is. Share it out with anybody who you know is kind of a little bit stale and run down and their battery is looking like, <laughs> because they lost track of who they were and they got lost in the corporate structure and they got lost in meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. And, uh, you know, maybe they'll get reinvigorated by this conversation. So going to send you guys all love. You can join me if you'd like to send them kisses, Michael. Here we go. We're going to send them kisses. Mwah. Oh, thank you. Now it's a good day. Kisses. So I'll see you guys next time on Soul Nectar Show. Bye for now.